Welcome to this presentation concerning the work of Heidelberg Seminary in training men for the ministry in the Philippines. There's a tremendous opportunity in the Philippines in conjunction with the church there, the Pearl of the Orient Covenant Reformed Church. This small denomination is poised to see tremendous growth in the next several years. There is great interest in the Reformed faith and pastors and students are desirous of being trained to establish Reformed churches. It's obvious to us that the Lord is providing a tremendous opportunity to advance the kingdom of Christ by means of the program we want to tell you about. So thank you for listening. Let me give you a little background information about the Philippines. Philippines are made up of some 7,100 islands, which are divided into three island groups. For the sake of this presentation, we have presented the map in three different colors to identify the three island groups. It is located about 500 miles east of Vietnam and just north of the equator. Filipinos originate from Southeast Asia, mainly from Malay and Indonesia background. There is a total of just under 105 million people. Officially, the Philippines is a Roman Catholic nation, and four-fifths of the people are members of the Roman Catholic Church. The current popular church is Pentecostal, with a prosperity gospel message. I'm often asked about the language. All of the schools use English, so they are capable of understanding English. Yet there are many native dialects, 10 are commonly used. In Luzon, the language is Tagalog, and in Mindanao, it is Cebuano. I should also give you a little background on the church in the Philippines. The POCRC, Pearl of the Orient Covenant Reformed Church, was formed 12 years ago with the advice and assistance of the RCOS. By 2017, there were four congregations with three pastors. Now there is potential for two or three congregations with pastors to join in the near future. From the beginning, there was a tremendous need for training men for the ministry. Due to this need, Heidelberg Seminary developed a program to provide ministerial training. This program requires students to complete 28 courses in four years. This is being accomplished by HTS, sending a professor each year to teach two concentrated courses. In addition, the students meet together in study groups and take courses by means of watching videos recording of courses. The students stay in contact with professors and take exams and submit papers meeting the normal requirements for taking a seminary course. The expectation is for students to complete at least five courses each year until the next time there is a professor on site for concentrated courses. In addition to providing the courses, the students are provided with necessary textbooks and for some travel and meal expenses while they study together. The first courses were taught when I traveled to the Philippines in the summer of 2017. The purpose was not only to introduce the program with two courses, but also to determine the level of interest. It soon became clear that there was considerable interest by men who attended these initial lectures to pursue a full degree program. Initially, 18 students enrolled in the program. Several of the students found that they were unable to continue due to demands by their jobs and other difficulties. There were also others who sought to enroll. So we have seen some turnover in student enrollment. At this point, 14 students have completed more than two years of the program and an additional five have completed one year. Within the past year, there has been considerable increase in the program, which has now resulted in the overall enrollment having more than tripled. By means of this presentation, we hope to introduce you to some of the students and for you to gain something of an understanding of the extent of the program. 
I arrived in Manila late on June 13 and was met by Gil Beloy, a fellow RCUS pastor and his traveling companion, David Van Houten. We took one day to adjust to the change in time and to recover from the trip. On Saturday, June 15, we traveled to the city of Malolos, which is in the province of Bulacan. There are 10 students who have been meeting together in Malolos since the beginning of the program. These are men with whom I have developed a close relationship. We met initially at a mall and ate together at Pizza Hut. After the meal, time was spent at the study center in discussing theology. On the Lord's Day, June 16, we met with Covenant Reformed Church, POCRC, in Malolos, which is the same building where the students meet to study. I was granted the privilege of preaching the Word of God as the congregation met for worship. Pastor Beloy gave a Sunday school lesson. We were also able to fellowship with the congregation when we joined them in a fellowship meal. In the afternoon, we traveled to Baguio City where space was rented from the Philippines Baptist Seminary to hold our classes for the week. Meals, a dorm, and several individual rooms along with a classroom were provided. There were 26 students in this class, a number of them being new to the program. I gave three lectures each morning on biblical theology. The students found this very interesting and were drinking it in. Each afternoon I gave three lectures on a combined hermeneutics homiletics course. This was also very appreciated by the students. In order to give appropriate credit, I had the students take a quiz at the end of each day's lectures. The final assignment is for them to submit a sermon dealing with a text related to biblical theology. These students will now study together by means of video recordings of additional courses in five different study centers. Study center number one is located in the province of Laguna which is also where Pastor Knapp's church is located. These students will be assisting him in his ministry. There are also plans to plant an additional church in this area. Study center number two is located in the province of Bulacan. These are the students who have been with the program since the beginning. They include Pastor Edmund Dallas Reyes, who is the pastor of the church in Malolos, under the oversight of the consistory in Malolos, several students are active in planting additional churches as they pursue their studies. Study center number three is located in the city of Cabatuan, which is in the province of Nuba Exentia, which is immediately to the north of Bulacan. Philip Cruz, who attended my class two years ago, is now pastoring a church here and has these four young men working with him. These are new students. He is leading them in their continued studies. Philip Cruz is scheduled to be examined in August with the hope of he and his church becoming part of the POCRC. Study center number four is located in the province of Pangasinan, where there is also a POCRC church in the city of San Carlos. Elder Rafael Martinez meets the needs of this church. In addition to the three students who were in the class, there are several men here who have been in the program in the past, but had to stop because of work demands. The hope is that they will be able to continue again at some point. One has already rejoined the group. Study center number five is actually located in the island group called Baseas in the province of Leyte. This is a particularly interesting group. The fellow in the red shirt is Ivan Rex Loretto. He has been in contact with me through Facebook since before the program ever started. At first I tried to ignore him to see if he would go away, but he never gave up in his desire to study Reformed theology. So he and two other men were able to be in the class this summer. Mr. Loretto plans to bring his church into the POCRC. I have also heard from him since I have returned home, and he tells me 
that he is setting up a study center in which there will be an additional 13 men gathering to study together. We will see how that develops. Two of these men came to the class as Reformed Baptists. When they left, they were very close to holding to covenant theology. Two men in the class came from the province of Apayo, about a 10 hour drive to the northern end of the Philippines. There will not be a study center here for now. However, one of the men pastors a church which is giving consideration to joining the POCRC. Following this first week of class, on Saturday, June 22, we traveled back to Manila and from there flew to Cagayan de Oro. Upon arrival, we were met by Kim Lapiz and his father. Kim is currently a student in the Canadian Reformed Seminary in Ontario, Canada. I met him there last November. His father is a pastor of Gyra Reformed Church in Cagayan de Oro. These men are very interested in what the POCRC is doing and desire to work closely with them and with us. They were a great help to us while we were in Cagayan de Oro. On Sunday, June 23, I preached at Grace Reformed Church, which is also the location where our classes were held the following week. This church meets in a place called Table Talk Lounge. The facility worked very well for the classes. In the afternoon, I preached in Gyra Reformed Church, where Kim Lapiz is doing a summer internship under his father. Gyra Church made their facility available as a place for the students to stay overnight. On June 23 through 28, I conducted the second week of classes. There were 40 students who attended these classes. Some of the students brought their wives to attend as well. This class was somewhat different than that of the first week. While I had contact with a few of these men previously, most of the students were new to the program. Also, virtually all of them are pastors. They have small, independent churches and are at various stages of discovering the Reformed faith. For this reason, I thought it best to teach my course on Reformed worship, along with biblical theology. I need to tell you a bit about these men. The gentleman with the striped shirt in this photo is a pastor of a church who at one time had been Pentecostal. He became reformed in his thinking and changed his church to reform. Because of this, it went from 100 members to 50, but is now committed to being reformed. The young men in the photo work with him I believe one of them will be joining the study group which meets in this location. The students came from several different areas where there are or will be study centers. Study center number six is held in the Table Talk Lounge in Keke on the Oro. There are three men, soon to be four, who study there. One of these men is an elder of Grace Reformed Church. Study center number seven is located in the province of Gusan del Sur. There are several groups who meet to study there. The gentleman standing to the right is Rocky Simbahan. He has also been in the program since the beginning. He is very capable and active in encouraging men with whom he has contact to study with him. Study center number eight is in General Santos, which is to the south of Davos City. These men, who are pastors, are quite new to Reformed theology. Pastor Bernalis, who is in Davo City, will be working with them. A number of students came from the city of Osamas, which is to the west of Cagayan de Oro. It is yet to be determined if they will have a study center. If this does come about, it will be study center number nine. The man in the center is Vernon Megascon, who is a friend of Pastor Nam. I really did consider it a great privilege to teach Reformed theology to these men. Saturday, June 29 was spent traveling to Davos City. We thought it was important that while we were in Mindanao to visit the Covenant Reformed Church where Vic Bernalis is the pastor. 
On Sunday, June 30, I had the privilege to preach the Word of God in Davao City. Following the service, we again had opportunity to fellowship with the congregation as we participated with them in a fellowship meal. In the afternoon, Pastor Beloy led a study on the Christian family. On Monday, July 1, was spent doing some sightseeing, and in the evening, we had a great time of fellowship, dining out with the consistory and wives. So a day of relaxation. Tuesday, July 2, we flew to Manila. In the evening, we were able to dine out with Pastor Knapp and his wife, and Pastor Oseas from Apayo, who was visiting his daughter in Manila. It was a very enjoyable time and encouraging to the pastors from the Philippines. On Wednesday, July 3, I flew the 20 hours to arrive back home. It truly was an exhausting and an exhilarating experience. I believe that the Lord has given a very unique opportunity to Heidelberg Seminary by means of the support which we receive from many of you. We are so grateful for your support for this ministry. There is reason to believe that the Lord has granted an open door to the gospel in the Philippines and through this ministry, the advancement of the kingdom of Christ. I believe that the seminary is not just an academic institution. Rather, it is a servant of the church. For the church to fulfill its mission in preaching the gospel and calling people to Christ, there must be those who do the work of ministry. One of the distinctives of the Reformed faith is that those who hold the office of preaching the gospel for the Lord are to be trained. This is the means by which the Lord extends his kingdom. With your support for this particular program, the seminary will be able to do its task in training men in preparation for gospel ministry. When men are trained and sent out, the church will grow in faith and its borders will be expanded. In this presentation, you have seen how men are doing ministry even as they are students. As you consider how you might support this work of Heidelberg Seminary, think of the benefits which will be realized in the work of missions. Thank you. We're here in uh, Baguio City. I'm visiting with Pastor Knapp. Yeah. And uh, we're just talking about how things are going in the courses this week, how uh, the number of students have increased. And I'm thinking back, it's about 40 years ago, you came to Sioux Falls and we first talked about what we could do to train men in the Philippines. So yeah. how has that developed? Actually, that was three years ago. Three years ago, okay. That was 2016. 17, 2016, 17, 18, 19. Okay. Okay. So, well, we are very thankful, really, for uh, the brethren, of course, of the RCUS, and of course, uh, uh, they have given me the opportunity to visit uh, RCUS churches. And one of the assignments that was given to me is to go to Suppose and talk to Dr. Maynard about uh, our need here in the Philippines and one of the needs that I mentioned to him is about uh, the training of our leaders, our pastors, because right now or before, three years ago, uh, there are only two pastors in the denomination and Davao, Pangasinan uh, and Laguna are still at church, 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 church at uh, that time. But in three years' time, uh, POCRT, CRC, probably the Orient Covenant Reformed Church, grew tremendously. I can tell you that because of the, the a program or the help or uh, the training that HTS uh, offered to us here in the Philippines. Now we have, uh, as a result of, our, of the training program that HTS offered us, we now have uh, an additional uh, one church, and that's the church of Pastor Edmund in Manolos, Bulacan. And there will be three more, three more churches that will be organized very soon. This is actually a result of uh, the training coming from 
Adelberg Theological Seminary through Dr. Maynard. Uh, he offered us the program, uh, uh, Master of Theological Studies. Is that right? Master of Theological right. Studies. And if the students are willing to go MD, they will. They should take or finish the language studies. So, what can I what can I say? Uh, if not to thank you, dear brothers from the RCS and from those who are you know, interested in uh, helping the program of HTSU in the Philippines, training leaders. Because we have a uh, great opportunity of uh, bringing reformation to different places in the Philippines. Right now, as a result again, uh, we will be developing another or additional uh, three, I think, three centers. Before, we only had two centers, Bulacan and Pangasinan. But now, there will be additional from uh, in uh, Leyte, uh, Laguna, and in Cabanatuan. So, there's a great uh, job for the Reformation here. We're a ministry of the Reformation here in the Philippines. So, please, uh, if I can uh, ask your assistance, your help for us, we will appreciate it uh, very much. So um, it's really interesting to see how these students are not just academic students, but they are going back home and doing ministry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so it's a tremendous implication for the growth of the church. Now one of the things that's kind of interesting when I talk about what we're doing, and I, I report the numbers of students and uh, just about every month the numbers go up higher. Yes. Uh, and uh, sometimes almost uh, unbelievably so. And yet um, uh, people are surprised. They wonder. So there seems to be a real open door to the Reformed faith in the Philippines. Would yes. you agree? Yes, you're right, uh, Dr. Maynard. Uh, maybe right now uh, it's because of uh, maybe our being open to the Reformed faith and Many are already also uh, interested to learn, and so HTS is very much a very good uh, training ground for these people, for these pastors actually who are interested to to learn about reformed faith. And so, you know, it's not that you have great big large churches; they're all small churches, but yeah. they're they're the foundation of of future growth. Yes, you're right. Yeah. And, and now we're. Uh, we're going to be spread out not only in in uh, Luzon, but then in Mindanao, Mindanao and throughout the Philippines. Yeah, I, again, yeah, that's, I would like to mention that we also have now we now also have a center in Mindanao, uh, and there are about maybe forty students that will be coming uh, with the classes of Dr. Maynard from June twenty four to twenty six, I think. <laughs> 28. 28, yeah. Next week, the whole That's week. That will be next week, the whole week. Right. So, so, yeah. It's, uh, it's a privilege for me. Yeah, and we really thank uh, Dr. Maynard, though this is really very tiring for him, we know. And we hope that uh, to hasten the training of uh, the students here, maybe they, the board of the HS in Sioux Falls will, you know, somehow uh, decide to send uh, Dr. Maynard or somebody else, uh, somebody from uh, HTS America to come here twice a year, once uh, two missionaries or two teachers, two, two instructors from RCUS or from... I'm hoping schools. maybe the next time two of us can come together. Yeah. So okay. one can teach in the morning and one can teach in the afternoon. Yeah, that's what we are... We'll have to see how that develops. Yeah. yeah, that's what we are actually planning so that uh, we can uh, hasten the development of leaders because right now we, we have churches actually that doesn't have pastors. I know there are also RCUS that uh, there are RCUS churches that has no pastor. The same uh, situation. Sure. But uh, we really have difficulties actually especially on my part, uh, pastoring three churches actually. <laughs> I actually remember you telling me that if we had ten more pastors, we'd have ten more churches. Yes. And that's still right. very much the case. Yes, you're right. Okay. So, 
well, there's a great uh, there's a great uh, uh, opportunity for church planting and church development here. So join us and pray for us as we continue our ministry here in the Philippines with the people that we have now. Okay, very good. Thank you, Pastor Nam. Yes, uh, Dr. Maynard, thank you for this opportunity to uh, be able to send this message to whoever will view this. May you remember us in your prayers.